If you're struggling to land your first IT position, you're definitely not alone. But here's the thing. There are literally thousands of IT positions posted in the US right now for entry level IT positions. So the opportunities are out there. You just have to know how to stand out and position yourself in the right way to get noticed by employers. I personally started off as an IT help desk intern a little over two years ago, and I've recently moved into a full time desktop support role. So in today's video, I'm going to break down the process that can actually help you land your first position in 2025. Now, I will say this isn't one size fits all advice as everyone has their own starting point in their career, but there are key things that you can do that will impact your hireability. Before we get into each step, if you want to connect with others in getting into IT, get feedback on your resume, or just chat about random IT topics, feel free to join the Discord at jamesy.tech Discord, linked down in the description below. Feel free to join. Now, the first step is to identify where you are currently, your background, your goals, your strengths, and what you need to work on. If you're switching careers, think about how your past job experiences and the skills and those experiences could translate into an IT position. For example, customer service, troubleshooting and process documentation, things like that are attractive to an employer in an IT position, but those are skills that you can get by doing almost any job. So take a look at what you've done in the past and cater your resume to an IT position, whether or not you may or may not have had technical experience in that role. The next thing you want to do is look at your weaknesses. This is the most important part. Is it your resume? Is it your technical confidence? Is it your interviewing skills? It could be any of those things, but if you're someone who's constantly applying and getting no replies back, no feedback back from the employers, that tells me that's most likely a resume or cover letter problem rather than interview skills or technical confidence. If you're actually getting to the interview, the first or second interview, but you're not getting to the offer, that tells me that's more, li more than likely your interview skills or technical confidence. That's why I personally suggest doing home labs and hands-on projects is because this gives you the technical confidence to answer any questions that interview will give you and it helps you not freeze up when asked a technical question. But try to evaluate where you're struggling. Are you getting to the interview or are you not even getting a response from the employer? Identifying where in the process you're getting stuck at will help you identify the weaknesses and how to improve them. The main thing I would express is everyone has weaknesses and starts somewhere. What matters most is that you identify those weaknesses and improve them little by little. Every skill you build, every lab that you do, every application that you submit gets you closer and closer to getting that offer. Now that you have a starting point and you know where your struggles are, now start to focus on the skills that you need to get to obtain that first IT position. First, I would suggest going through job listings and see what is mentioned most. Things like Active Directory, Office 365, Networking Basics, Hardware, Troubleshooting, Troubleshooting Devices Remotely. Those are some key skills that employers do ask for in these types of positions. If you have no credential, for example, a certificate, certification, coursework, or degree, in my opinion, it's pretty hard to get into IT because a lot of employers like to check that box of having some sort of IT credential. Here are some that I would name if you don't already have an IT credential if you want to start out. The first one I would mention is the Google IT Support Professional Certificate, which has a full video course and has built-in labs for the coursework and comes with a uh, certificate once you complete the course. Along with that, it also gives you a discount for the CompTIA A+, which would be the next certification I would recommend if you're looking to get your first certification in IT. The CompTIA A+, is one of the most known IT certifications. It does have two exams which you need to pass, which is the difference between a certification versus a certificate. But the CompTIA A+, is a well-known industry standard IT certification that a lot of employers do ask for for IT help desk positions. So that would be one that I would look into if you're interested. And lastly, if you want to get that hands-on knowledge and you're not really interested in taking an exam per se, I would say the Course Careers uh, Certificate would be a great one to look into. Course Careers would be a good option as its main goal is to get you your first IT position rather than just giving you a certification. It goes over the basics of IT, hardware basics, networking, and has interactive labs that gets you ready for your first IT role. All of those credentials will be linked down in the description below. If you have any credential that helped you get into your first IT position, feel free to comment down below what helped you get into IT. But those are the three that came up in my mind for the top three that I could think of. But here's the key, don't just study, actually do the work. If you're someone who has a computer, look into setting up virtual machines on your computer and setting up a Windows server. From there, you can create a Windows domain, uh, create user accounts, deploy a group policy, manage permissions, and even simulate real help desk tickets. That would be something I would absolutely recommend to someone who has no IT experience, actually get into the weeds and learn the technical knowledge and actually do some of the work before going, going into an interview. Labs show employers that you're not just memorizing, but you can actually apply what you learn. And that's huge for interviews and just getting employers to notice you. Now, next we wanna talk about your resume and cover letter. Your resume should be short, clear, and measurable. And in my opinion, only one page. 
Um, until you have a couple years of experience in IT, only having one page is super important on a resume because in my opinion, employers won't look past the first page, especially when they have thousands of other applicants to look into. You want one effective page that shows what you can do and why you should be hired. You want to include your summary, education, experience, uh, certifications, and projects, and then focus each bullet point on measurable outcomes rather than your day-to-day -day task. Now your cover letter should tell your story, not restate your resume. Explain why you want the role, what you've built, what you've learned, what labs you've done, and how that connects to the company's needs within one page. If you don't have work experience, talk about your labs or certifications, but explain what that actually taught you, not that, not just that you did the labs. Tailoring a cover letter to your application can significantly increase your response rate and also can help you stand out against other applicants who just submit their resume with nothing else. Now, another thing that's really important is having an online profile and having an online presence. In my opinion, a lot of recruiters will reach out to you just by seeing your profile on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is basically your online resume that other people can see. Keep your photo professional, update your headline, create a summary, uh, upload your certifications and projects, and upload posts showing your progress in IT. A lot of people like to look on people's LinkedIn profiles, and I've had a lot of recruiters reach out to me through my LinkedIn. So there's also a section that allows you to turn on the open for work section on your LinkedIn, which allows you to put in keywords for positions that you're interested in. So put in things like IT support, help desk, desktop support, or data center, something like that. Uh, be wary though, because sometimes there are scam jobs or sc uh, recruiters that are not real that will re reach out to you with jobs that aren't real. So do be careful when you're applying for certain positions or when people reach out to you directly. But I have had real opportunities come to me directly through LinkedIn. Now, the next thing is you want to apply a lot and have a plan for applying. You'll hear people have applied for like 10 jobs. They say they hear nothing back and they give up. That's that's pretty normal. In my opinion, you're going to apply for 10, 20 jobs and you might not hear something back. Apply to hundreds of jobs and have a plan and a schedule to apply for jobs. I would recommend making a basic spreadsheet of the jobs that you're applying for just so you can keep track of the uh, status of each application and potentially follow up with the hiring manager if you don't hear back. But if you're not working right now and you really want to get a job, treat applying like a full-time job. Set a goal of 15 to 20 applications per day or if not more and make sure that you actually track the status of those applications. Also use every site that's available to you. For example, LinkedIn, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Monster. I'm sure there's many more, but use as many as possible because there are a bunch of jobs that don't get posted on every single uh, job board. So going to different sources to apply for jobs is a great way to find different opportunities. If you're applying to hundreds of jobs and getting zero replies, something's off. Usually that's something to do with your resume or cover letter or something to do with the formatting in your resume. Um, that's when you want to reevaluate, see, see what you might want to get rid of or replace in your resume, maybe change some of your keywords or your summary, and then uh, start reapplying. it. Now, when you get to the interview, remember this, communication is more important than the deep technical knowledge, especially with entry-level roles. Most, most companies are hiring for potential and attitude. They're, they want to see your passion for the position that they're hiring for. Um, they won't expect you to know everything. Also research the company, look at their mission statement, know the basics of what they do and the technology they use. Um, also research the a person who's interviewing you. I personally will go to their LinkedIn and just look to see their background and how long they've been at the company, which can help you generate some questions for the interview. Usually the first round of interviews will be some sort of phone call from a recruiter or the company. Usually someone from HR or someone with less technical background in IT will give you the first interview. So in the first interview, you want to present yourself well and explain your background in layman's terms um, rather than in technical technical jargon, I guess you could say, because um, HR is generally not going to uh, grill you on technical topics, but more so to see if you fit in with the company, the, their culture, and if you should get the second round of interviews. Now, when you get to the technical interview, here are some questions that you may want to look out for and be ready to answer. One would be how you handle a frustrated user. First, you'd want to stay calm and Listen more than you talk, understand the user's issue, let them vent if they need to, because a lot of times if users are frustrated, they just want to do their job, they just want IT to work, and no one likes calling IT, so you just want to be there to listen to them, let them vent, and give them reassurance that you're actually going to solve their problem. So take a step back, listen to their issue, once they're done venting, restate their issue, and then walk them through what you're going to try to do to solve their issue. Most of the time, if somebody's frustrated, they just want someone to listen to them and understand their problem. And if, as IT, you're going to have that happen sometimes. People are going to be frustrated that their stuff isn't working. So you just got to sit back and understand where they're coming from. Now, another question they may ask you in an interview is how do you prioritize tickets? This is a great question, and it's pretty important when doing help desk. Um, you want to mainly prioritize tickets based on the business impact and, and urgency of the ticket. 
Um, does this issue affect multiple users or does it halt business operations? Definitely more important than a single user request or a keyboard not working, something like that. So definitely think about the business impact and urgency when prioritizing tickets. At the end of the interview, the interviewer will ask you if you have any questions for them. If you don't have any questions for them, in my opinion, that shows that you're not prepared for the interview. You always want to have at least one or two questions when coming into the interview. A good example would be, what are some common issues or tickets that come in that your team handles? Another good question would be, what does success look like in an applicant for this position? So that would help get an idea of what the employer is looking for and why they might want to hire you. But asking questions definitely helps create that back and forth with the interviewer and shows that you're interested in the job. Clear communication and confidence in an interview can get you the job more so than if you have technical ability but can't express that in layman's terms or just can't explain it. And lastly, you'll want to always reevaluate your situation. If you're not seeing success in your plan, take a step back and see what it is that you're doing wrong or what you may be struggling in and improve on those areas little by little. So to wrap this video up, evaluate your situation, learn the right skills, build a solid resume, cover letter, and LinkedIn profile. Apply like crazy and always reevaluate your results. If you guys have any questions or anything to add to this, please comment down below. I try to respond to almost every comment on my videos. And once again, if you guys are interested in joining the Discord full of, we have a little over 500 members in the Discord. Join the Discord at jamesy.tech slash Discord link down in the description below or in the pinned comment. If you guys are interested in the CompTIA Plus certification, the Google IT support certificate, or the course career certificate, those will also be linked down in the description below. But yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching this video. If those tips helped you guys out, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jamesy Tech, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.